Hello everybody, welcome back to the series about breathing. We are moving into the next chapter where I want to talk about uh, awareness, which hmm, is actually a term I, I don't know why I'm using it, as I don't really like it so much, only because it has been used so much, almost so much that it's lost a bit of its authenticity. So I will kind of go into breaking that down a little bit. Um, and relation, as we are beings of relation, and I think the breath has something to do with that. The breath is part of the way that we are in our expression um, and in the way that we move through um, the world, um, through life, um, but also relation in the sense of, you know, what the breath is related to uh with uh in the bigger picture so uh what happens when i improve improve my breathing capacity for example so that's exactly what i want to talk about today so especially actually very interesting times of course at the moment where there is this virus going around that is uh causing people breathing difficulties um and um, looking at the, the work that is being done around that in, in offering people breathing practices to help them deal with some of the long COVID issues, especially around um, breathing difficulties. Um, and the focus is really lying on developing this breath awareness so there is that word <laughs> um real kind of almost in a way restoring a healthy relationship and the true sensation of the breath so when we are struggling with the breath there is some form of dysregulation it could be a nervous system issue it could be a holding pattern with a lot of tension contraction it could be scar tissues it could be you know inflammation um, a whole mixture of different factors and part of the healing process uh, especially when it comes to the nervous system as well as our tissues is to restore some of our innate intelligence which you know I think in some respect we use that word awareness for uh, where we have a real felt sense of what's happening bringing real attention to something and then the innate intelligence of the body that is an intelligence of healing can actually kick in and take place and restore uh, release unhelpful patterns and holding patterns and tensions um, and can focus on on whatever really is required in the in the healing process so uh, in the support for people who are, who are suffering with breathing difficulties um, it's kind of not so much about sort of saying okay like you know right now you can hold your breath for two counts and we want to get to 20 or you know kind of it's not so it's not that it's not about uh, kind of improving performance as such and yes you know it is like every practice with practice things get better everybody who practices something regularly will get better at it that's just the way it, it is <laughs> um and yes we can also you know in a way train our breathing muscles but it's more about training them to have healthier habits and healthier patterns and to undo the unhealthy and unsupportive and unhelpful patterns that are holding and getting stuck and getting us stuck in our breathing um, because very often the tension uh, the problem is that we are holding too much tension for example in the diaphragm right so we can practice releasing that and coming into full expression for example so um, I think, you know, practicing breath awareness, noticing, focusing on the breath uh, with any of these exercises that I've been talking about so far, that is kind of an underlying sort of foundation of the practice. Whatever we do, whether we're counting, whether we are breathing through the left or the right, or whether we are Whatever it is that we're doing as our exercise, 
we are fostering attention on the breath um, and that in itself just has such an important role in the process of healing um, but then of course also I think it's really helpful to understand what happens when because it sort of has a loop um, so when we improve our breathing capacity what impact does that have and in and my take on it is that our breath is one of the ways that we are relating to the world around us um, we are you know we're kind of sort of we're breathing in and expanding out into space and we're exhaling and releasing that breath and we are we're taking in oxygen from the space around us and there is that kind of there is an interchange with the environment around us and if the air quality is bad that will have an impact on us and so on so it has a you know that natural relationship to the space around us uh the breath and and air is required to create our voice so it's a fundamental aspect of expressing ourselves um in some way it's it's involved in singing um so uh, a a breath that is breathing at its full you know or expressing itself at its full potential in a healthy pattern without any stress factors pulling on it in any shape or form it's going to make a difference in the way that we are able to express ourselves um, I already mentioned this we also have this respiratory feedback loop that when we are in full expression of our full diaphragmatic breath there is a message going back to the brain saying oh this person in this body must be feeling okay because they are breathing fully with their diaphragm without any stress or tension on that um, so oof, we can relax um, oversimplifying that but that is ultimately kind of you know what the sort of communication loop is that we have going on and so that allows us to relate to the world around us more safely more comfortably um, with you know this ability for resolving situations more constructively um, and yeah more compassionately as well um, because it's got to do with where we are where we are at in our own kind of being and system right so there is this kind of and it keeps going around and when we are in that in that place of comfort and compassion we are again more aware we are noticing more clearly for the situ every situation that we are in for more for what it actually is with less distraction and distortion uh, same goes being able to notice inwards and perceive our breath with more truthful uh, awareness um, and sensation and and so we improve again that factor that we are kind of practicing with our exercises so in that way it kind of goes goes round and is a really important factor in in our healing because actually very often when we are dealing with whatever health issues with with pain in the body things like that it's it's very often related to kind of struggling being in in the world in some way we've kind of fallen out of out of resonance with something and so that's why it sort of slots into into that aspect of, of healing in my in my mind that's my take on it i don't know if i'm explaining that in the best possible way so if you feel i i haven't quite made that very clear my point on this um then please do engage ask some questions put your take on it into the comments i think this is a really interesting aspect um and could be a really fun conversation uh, and discussion um so would very much love your comments and questions below the video um thank you so much for for tuning in again um we've got a couple of episodes coming in this chapter and i'm thinking there'll be one or two little little add-ons at the end of this series as well where maybe i'll share a couple more actual uh, exercises to do uh, breathing practices
so but for now this is it thank you so much for for watching um if you like this stuff feel free to share it depending on where you're catching it on facebook see that's easy if it's on youtube feel free to send the link uh to people um and yeah see you see you again next week take care for now